Okay, well, I am. I, I think I am the most excited about our next guest. He's our main interview guest. He's a UFC fighter. I want to introduce him. We have a video of him. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, watch this video and check him out in action. Here we go. Yeah, this is incredible. So, um, you're a UFC fighter. Yeah. And is th this is this is, you're at the top of your form right now. Right now, right now. Yep. How do you feel about that? <laughs> um, it's it's pretty good. Uh, getting this uh, UFC contract, uh, it was unreal for sure. But it's the goal for you know most fighters who mm -hmm. want to who want to uh, continue this career and you know make some money out of it. And when did you start, when you were like, I'm going to be a fighter? It was probably around the age of 20 when I started. Um, is, I that, did. is that late? Uh, no, not really. It depends on how you look at it, mm -hmm. right? Your mindset, the mindset of a fighter and, oh, am I, am I too old for this? I didn't really think that at 20, and I certainly don't think of now entering the uh, UFC at 30. So I've been doing this for uh, about 10 years, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'm glad that we got this far. And I'm, I'm just 30. I feel like I'm uh, just now breaking that barrier because I'm I'm 30, but I'm not like you know over that uh, over that hump of 35. My body's starting to like break down. Yeah, I am 35. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm down here. 36. <laughs> Enjoy this last year. <laughs> my fighting career is over. Your fighting well, career I'm, over. I'm six four, and like actually, like growing up my whole life, uh, you know, I had like wrestling coaches, I had football coaches, I had people. I had some boxing nut friend of mine was like, "Come on, you're wasting your gift," and I was like, "Theater." <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's a lot more um, safe. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. So, but like, okay, so I have a question. Like, you know, UFC, being a fighter, being a professional fighter, is, you know, is it like ballet? Is it like gymnastics where there is sort of this age gap? Or like, is it sort of like you have to kind of get it, it early? Um, or are you breaking it's, the mold? Yeah, it's best to get it early. Um, I, I look at uh, different videos, especially in Thailand. Their kids are starting at like five. Mm -hmm. You know, they're starting pretty young. And they're not technically uh, just training it, but they're actually like, you know, having five-year-olds compete with each other. And that's pretty young, obviously. We can all agree that's pretty young mm -hmm. uh, to, be, to be fighting. But uh, they're, they're starting pretty young, and those little kids are going to be dangerous <laughs> at, <laughs> at the age of, like, 15 or 16, you know? Uh, do you think that, like, where you grow up, like, matters as far as, like, I mean, because isn't Brazil sort of the number one place you want to be? It's, yeah, it sort of is. There's a lot of talk with uh, Brazil and and how they treat uh, steroids. Obviously, it's banned here. Mm -hmm. um, but Brazil kind of, kind of looks the other way and doesn't see it as a drug. So they kind of, it is a performance in answer, and that's how they look at it. Not as, oh, I'm cheating. It's not like I kind of need this. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there, there's really legit fighters out there, really good. But if they got like you know tested, it'd be a Does the UFC different test? story. They do, they do test, and okay. a lot of. Brazilians get a, um, yeah, mm. nah. they get they get cut from it because they they piss dirty or uh, they drug test dirty. Mm. Ah. So and my first UFC fight, uh, I, they actually drug tested me twice, which was weird. I was like, oh okay, right before I went out, and then right after. So I'm not too sure what that was about, but obviously I don't. Racism. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Minnesota. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um. That was a good one. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and like for your per like how would you describe your fighting style personally? I will always say uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I started out with. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing that for about 12 years now. Uh, I like boxing, and I, obviously from that huh, video, I'm really good at my stand up. <laughs> but um, uh, just the craft of Jiu Jitsu, the fundamentals of it. Um, you're not really, it's just like wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. you've wrestled before and no, you're not. No, I haven't wrestled. Oh. He was approached. I was approached. <laughs> okay. I was recruited. They're like, please, let's, let's no. Okay, we'll, we'll pretend that you're a wrestler. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, there's no, you know, there's no fist involved. Uh -huh. You know, you're just grappling, having, you know, having some fun mm -hmm. wrestling. Uh, it's not like uh, boxing where everything is kind of stressful and you're worried about a hit or anything. Like, when you're just rolling, is what we call it in jiu-jitsu rolling, it's the same as uh, wrestling, but I'm in jiu-jitsu mode now, so I'm gonna say rolling. But uh, yeah, when you're rolling, you know, you're you're not really thinking. You're thinking, thinking of move. It's kind of like a game of uh, tag. My uh, good friend of mine described it to me as a game of tag, and it was it made pretty good sense. Like I'm tagging you, uh, he's tagging me. I'm basically submitting you with a choke, uh, he submits me with an armbar. Oh, you're it. Oh, you're it. Back and forth for like five minutes, and that's that's the beauty of it. It was pretty fun. And it's like, it takes away the stress. If you're having a long, rough day of, of stress, that takes it all away and it's nice. So I will always say that uh, what kind of fighter I am is definitely Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, even though I have dominant hands. <laughs> when you, <laughs> when you, when you said your stand up was good, can you explain that? Because, you know, we have a different idea of mm -hmm. what stand up is. Oh, yeah, I'm no. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm at my gym, and everybody already, everybody already knows what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, stand up is just a different way of saying uh, uh, kickboxing or Got boxing, okay. basically. What gym, what gym did you, are you involved in here? I train at uh, Beaverton Impact. Um, Shout out. Yeah, Beaverton. <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you like the, the big man on campus right now? At that place? Right, right now, yes, we do have uh, a few other fighters, uh, two more pros, and a couple of amateurs uh, on our on our roster as well. Um, I am the one who's gotten the farthest, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm better. I always try to stay humble with that because my teammates are the ones that got me here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, okay, so you, you you had your first fight in the UFC, and then yeah. you were injured, correct? Yeah, yeah. What was I the had injury? no idea how that injury happened. So in that fight, my meniscus, medial meniscus, uh, mm -hmm. for for our doctor's terms, was uh, <laughs> torn. So I had to get at least 20-30% uh, of it uh, taken out, which, I mean, for the big part of it, if you look at it, a knee replacement uh, sucks. Like LCL, MCL, those are like serious injuries. So, for a medial meniscus to be torn, it wasn't as bad. It's like the it's a, it's a minor surgery for your knee. So I thought of it as okay, this is this is ten years in. This is like the worst injury I've had, and it's not even that bad. Mm -hmm. There's six to eight weeks of uh, recovery time, which is that's kind of how things like uh, we're on our ninth week now. Mm -hmm. So now we're just. Uh, mm -hmm getting back into the groove of training. And what was the UFC's response to you being injured in the ring? Oh, uh, they they hopped on the phone pretty quickly, yeah. which was nice, because you don't get that with a lot of the uh, other organizations that are lower than the UFC. Uh, they called me, set, set up all the appointments. I, I did nothing except for just go to the appointments, appointments which was really nice. You know, they, they set everything up. Um, is they chose a pretty good doctor. They just, they just like supported you, and they're like, "You're our athlete, and we're going to take care of you." And I mean, this is, I mean, this is something I think is very phenomenal. Um, whereas like other athletes or other places, college athletes, the WWE, like if you get injured, it's like you're on, your, you're just cut to, cut to dry, you know? Yeah, and it's the WWE. I mean, obviously they make way more money than we do. They, they're like in the millions for sure. Uh, if, obviously, you're the, if you're the Rock. If you're, you're the, the Rock, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're if you Dwayne get a knee injury, Johnson. like you're nobody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, he's a uh, that that company, WWE is a lot more bigger than us mm -hmm. uh, within the UFC. So they do pay fires enough for them to get their own surgery or whatever. But like you said, there are companies lower than that that don't treat their fighters. They don't pay their fighters, and these are. These are people who, you know, are consciously saying, "Hey, I want to, I want to fight," 
and I'm doing this, I'm a, I'm a performer. I'm performing for your show, I'm making you money, but then you know they don't get any of that money, which kind of sucks. A lot of amateurs uh, don't get paid, mm. especially in Oregon, which kind of sucks, because wow. about five. Why Oregon? Or I think it's pretty much maybe everywhere. Um, I, I don't want to technically say everywhere, because maybe there are some spots that do pay 100 bucks. But yeah, mm. 100 bucks is not enough. And then they'll, uh, the Rosalind Theater, I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the Rosalind Theater. They have a. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> Rosalind Theater. Yeah. So they have a FCFF card, Full Contact uh, Fighting Federation, and they do that at the Rosalind Theater. And uh, they don't pay their fighters, their amateur fighters, is, and they don't, uh, they only cover 10, 10,000 for insurance. So it's not as much, especially if you get, you know, your knee injured more than just a medial meniscus. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. So it would be awesome if they did start paying fighters the bare minimum at least like 500 and then up that uh, scale of insurance like mm -hmm. 1500. But it's, you know, promoters. Are you listening? <laughs> Get on it. Promoters, okay, so yeah. I want to switch to your, so who, who is a fighter that you looked up to that you were like, that's who I want to be, or maybe a fighter that um, inspired you to start training in this craft? Uh, the, the one fighter who for sure inspired me was uh, George St. Pierre. Does that, does that mm -hmm. name sound familiar? Canadian! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he's Canadian, huh? <laughs> yeah, so... And he's, like, he's a very noble man, it seems like. That, that was another thing, too. He was pretty noble. He was really humble. Mm -hmm. And the way he won fights was strategically. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all, uh, I'm, I'm big and I can throw pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And it uh, wasn't always about submissions. He knew his opponent. He knew his weaknesses. And even if he didn't know his weaknesses, his opponent would show a weakness inside that cage, and he would just try to develop off of that, which was, you know, amazing. How how can someone do that at such a high intensity of stress in their mind, mm -hmm. and still be able to think, okay, this isn't working, and I got to switch it up. So he was always uh, the first person who's got me into it, mm -hmm. and now because he's retired. Uh, there is boo. a, yeah, I know, boo. Well, he's, yeah, he's like 30. He's eight. 35, he's washed up. <laughs> <laughs> he's 36. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, now it's uh, Demetrius Johnson, who's a uh, fighter that's close to my way, and he actually lives up in Seattle. Mm. Um, he's making quite a name for himself with a, a record of 30 wins and three losses. Damn. Yeah, 30 wins wow. and three losses. And... He's not in the UFC anymore. They switched him to one championship, which is in Japan. Uh, they're probably paying him double what he got in the UFC. But he holds the record for most title defenses, and that's at 11. 11 title defenses. Yeah, yeah, big hand and block for that. Does anybody know Anderson Silva? Anderson Silva, yes! Yeah. Yeah. He's a legend. Well, because I'm kind of a fair weather UFC fan. I enjoy it a lot, but I'm not I'm not following it. I'm into it. But Anderson Silva, you know, back in the day was definitely who I was like, this guy is insane. He is just like absolutely technically perfect. Um, and I really want to know what you think about Anderson Silva. Yeah, in his prime, he was he was really good. His his striking was was more than 100% accuracy. Uh, his knowledge inside the cage. Not the, humble, though. Uh, yeah, not at the end of his career, yeah. At the end of his career, he was, he was kind of a douche. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, what goes around comes around because that dude from New York, Chris Weidman, uh, you know, knocked him out. Mm -hmm. and Is then, that where he like, broke his leg? And then broke his leg, because they fought, they fought twice. Ooh. And he threw a kick to his leg, and what it's called for Muay Thai is a um, check kick. When someone throws a kick, you kind of just lift up your leg so you could check it with your shin. And that literally, oh, when he no. threw that kick, <laughs> does anybody, yeah, you kind of remember that? Uh, when he no. threw that kick, uh. his whole leg bent over. Yeah, it broke his uh, uh. tibula, his fibula. And I think that's when he retired. Yeah, he's like, I'm done, yeah. yeah. You're, you're done after that, kid. Well, so, okay, I'm switching gears again. Um, so you hear about all of these, uh, you're a professional fighter, okay? Yes. And so if you were to go to Forest Park and you hear about all these, like, a cougar attacks a man, do you think, <laughs> do you think you could beat a cougar? Journey Newson fights a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> Journey Newson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I would not. I would never fight a cougar. But what is? <laughs> hey, give it up. 
We are going to play a game. We're going to play a game with Hannah, with Journey. Uh, I'd like to invite an audience member to come up and play the game with you. You could win a prize. Is there an audience member who'd like to come up here and play a game with us? We will be fighting a cougar. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, nobody. Great. Give yourself a round of applause. Yay! <laughs> all right, we're going to play a game. Uh, this is called Beaten Up or Beaten Off. <laughs> <laughs> It is what you think it is. It is. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be showing you pictures zoomed in on somebody being beaten up or somebody beating off. And audience, you can play along with, the band you can play with, and then whoever wins between Hannah and Journey and the audience wins okay. all yeah. the points. Yeah. All right. Uh, can we get slide number one, the beaten up and beaten off? What is this? Oh, my. What do you think? That's, that's beaten up. Beaten up, audience? Yeah. Beaten up. What is, what is it? It's beaten yeah. up. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Do you know who that is? Oh, uh, who is that? I don't know. Okay, not no important. Idea. Yeah, yeah. not important. Some okay, bum. next slide. Next slide. Beaten up, beaten off. What is <laughs> Beating off. Beating yeah, off. Beating sure. off. Beating <laughs> off. What do you think, Journey? We'll say beaten off. Beaten off. All right. It <laughs> is beating off. Yes. He has some help. It, it's like his dad watching him? <laughs> Looks like his dad's He's encouraging like him. <laughs> All right, next slide, next slide. Beaten up or beaten off. Um, who do we got here? Oh, Ooh, that one's hard. Hannah? I say beating up. We'll say, beating up? We'll say she's a female. We'll say beaten up. Yeah. Beaten up? Hey, they can beat off too. That's true. Not with that <laughs> yeah. facial expression. Yeah. Not that All right, what facial is the answer, Rick says? Beaten okay. yeah. up. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay, next slide. Beaten up, beaten off. Um, what do we think? Oh, who's, oh, who's that? Who's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it? What is it? That's beaten up. Beaten up, beaten up. What do we got? Beaten up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up. Ronda oh. Ronda. Oh. All right, moving right. Oh, up. right to the oh. face. All right, next slide. What do we got over here? Um, beaten oh. off. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beaten up. <laughs> She's into it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Yeah. Beaten up, oh. yes, yes. Wow. Oh, Before yeah. and after and during. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, next slide, next slide. What do we got here? This is this. That's a toughie. Uh, 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 uh. I say beating up. Beating up? Oh, that's a toughie. Yeah, it looks like he has a stiffy. We'll say beaten up. Beaten off? Beaten off? All right, beaten off. What do you think? Beaten off. Beaten off. It is. All right, what is it? Survey says, oh! His body is a wonderland. That is beaten off. That's Okay, last slide, last slide. What do we got here? Beaten up or beaten off? This is 100% beating off. I was not sure about anything. 100% beating off. That was me beating off, for sure. Beating oh, okay. off, it's Jerry. Oh. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, give up for Jerry. Man, that went so well. I want to fight. I'm just kidding. Me too. <laughs>